Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu analysis video. In the morning, these videos come in the evening MCU lessons. They are taken by Dr. Mahipal sir. 28th of December it is and important issues. Uh, uh, let's discuss. Numbers I have given to you. More updates are gonna come in the month of January and from February the uh, the super app of study IQ is uh, uh, going to be started where all the payments will be very easy all the affordable courses will be available and uh, that will be a very working platform so uh, drastic changes are happening on the platform and uh, very appropriate and important help is on the way so first issue gross NPAs may rise to 9.9% by next September this is uh, reflected in the RBI's report you see RBI recently came up with the the financial stability report and uh, the GNP ratio that is the central point here banks had faced a lot and after seven years the situation of situation of NPAs uh, that improved for a bit now again for the next year RBI says these NPAs will rise right now uh, actually uh, in September 2019 it the, these were at 9.3 percent and that may rise to 9.9 percent by next year's September month so if you see the financial stability re report report is biennial in two years uh, this comes and uh, it reflects the collective assessment of the subcommittee of financial stability and development council so that's an important data for the uh, prelims point of view now the report said that the non performing asset ratio of banks is increasing so from 9.3% it may go up to 9.9% or maybe 10% also so this is not good after so many years around 7 years banks so a decline in the npa uh, problem but again it is going to rise because of the economic slowdown issue so we are going to discuss a big article on economic slowdown and two reports are related to economy only so uh, this uh, reports highlight uh, they are talking about the provision co co uh, coverage ratio pcr it increased to 61.5 percent from 60.5 percent in march 19 so from march to september there was an increase and uh, higher the pcr it is good for the economy because higher pcr means the unexposed part of bad loan is lower okay and uh, the provisions made against the bad loans it talks about that it is the indication of those things so some improvement but you see the credit losses they also jump to 7.3 percent I means they jumped by 7.3 percent is there so that was uh, something very negative but the CRAR, the credit weighted asset ratio, CRAR, what uh, uh, what it means and uh, how it works means when there is risk involved in some assets because it is the capital to risk weighted assets ratio, the assets which may be on risk. So to maintain that risk, some capital is, uh, is uh, kept with the banks there. This is the CRAR norm. So that also improved to 15.1% means uh, a bigger risk cover is available with the banks. So from 14.3% to 15.1% is available there. So that was some improvement. Here if we see the sector wise report, then only 4 banks had gross NPAs higher than 20%. 20% is a, a horrible number and uh, it is very difficult for the banks to survive in those conditions. but. Uh, they are supported they are uh, uh, given uh, the capital additionally but positively for 24 banks the NPAs are below 5% so that's a good thing IBC is working for the main issue and we are getting some recoveries there so uh, that we are discussing uh, on everyday basis I think these days next GNPA measures was used to measure asset quality of agriculture and industrial sector also and disappointingly for the agriculture sector it deteriorated to 10.1 percent in september 19 compared to 8 percent in march so the npas are rising for agriculture sector and further problems will be there for sure because it's already in a deep crisis and the credit availability is the uh, uh, big issue there the non uh, repayment of the loans that is killing a lot of farmers there 
but for the industrial sector the gnpa declined to 3.79 percent so that's a relief there okay that was the information uh, important for the gs paper 3 next winged visitors flock to pulikat pulikat lake where is the location it is about chennai north to, to chennai and it is the border of andhra pradesh and chennai you are looking at this is the border this is pulikat lake pulikat lake wildlife sanctuary the link road and it is linking to what this is the barrier island what is barrier island means this is the uh, low area here the fresh water is coming from this side and the sea water is also entering this area so it's a brackish water body but it is separated from this barrier island okay this is bay of bengal here and this is the lake so total salty water is there in this ocean here it is the brackish water because both the waters are mixing here so this is barrier island this is uh, uh, made due to some uh, sediments or maybe some rocky formation there so it separates but partially not fully because this body is not fully isolated so this is barrier island and this is the famous barrier island of Sri Harikota where the Satish Dhawan Space Center is there and all the rockets and all these are launched there so this is a very very important and strategic area but the location you must remember here uh, it is also famous for the wildlife uh, sanctuary and the bird sanctuary especially so the annual flamingo festival these are the visitors they come from the Siberia area and uh, from Siberia this is India they come they go to these areas every day in winters because the winters are unbearable in Siberia so uh, this is the highway here and on the highway here it is the location means uh, uh, these uh, lines are drawn wrongly I think this is the path here from northeast to the south southern region of uh, uh, India they flock to these regions so especially on the wetlands and especially on the uh, the, these uh, uh, these kind of uh, lakes and all they stay there so it attracts a lot of migratory birds it attracts the northeast monsoon rains also northeast monsoon rains their direction is this as i've drawn here just opposite to the southwest direction uh, southwest monsoon southwest is like this and uh, this is the retreating monsoon of northeast so uh, those rains are also attracted by the political lake here so that's the importance so the annual flamingo festival and this is in Nellore district there so animal annual flamingo festival in Nellore district is round the corner within the winged visitors arriving in large numbers on their annual sojourn so it's a perfect sojourn for them a warmer area and uh, they leave their uh, they lay their eggs there and uh, they they spend a good time there during winters so more than 40,000 flamingos can be seen uh, uh, in action in the lake there so uh, it's a very scenic area for the bird watchers there many places are there in India like that like this Pulikat Lake the Kevala Dev Ghana bird sanctuary there and uh, in Manipur the lake is there so so many areas across the country so you must know about the Pulikat uh, Lagoon Lake also second largest brackish water lagoon in India after Chilika Lake so Pulikat Lagoon is considered to be the second largest brackish water body in India measuring 759 square kilometers. Chilika Lake is the biggest one. It is also separated by barrier islands there. Here also this is important. And these are the areas under it. Venado Reserve Forest and uh, Peranadu Reserve Forest. Marshy uh, Wetland region there. Pulikat Lake region there. So it is all the lagoon area. The lake encompasses the Pulikat Lake Bird Sanctuary and the Berry Island of Sri, Lanka, uh, Sri Harikota there and remember Satish Dhawan Space Center do not confuse it with other important islands there okay next issue again important for the economy RBI directs large cooperative banks to report all exposures above 5 lakh crore rupees a few days back they came up with the information that uh, primary urban cooperative banks having total assets of 500 crores or more they will maintain the CRI L, uh, CRI L, LC reporting framework this is the important repository created by RBI 
so under that they will mandatorily register and they will maintain the data there if their assets are totaling more than 500 crore rupees now the new announcement by rbi directs the large cooperative banks to report all exaggerate exposures of 5 crore rupees and more means any loan bigger than 5 crore that will be taken care of and that will be reported to the CRI LIC repository central repository of information on large credits so CRI LC remember that they may certainly ask you about CRI LC uh, created by RBI and uh, who comes under it this covers the banks scheduled commercial banks non banking financial uh, companies and all India financial institutions with the multiple objectives there so they all are covered under that central bank has created this CRI LC and here you see aggregate exposure will include all fund based and non fund based exposures so that's the importance means it is all to cover the risk there because uh, the the Maharashtra cooperative banks issue is all well known many people they have lost their lives and uh, uh, there also the assets were more so bigger assets they need to report to the RBI repository there CRI LC, LC repository there so that's important now the most important article of the day the economy article the newspaper is filled up with the, with the protest informations and other political information so uh, only uh, this uh, article is crucial there the CA article we have discussed uh, that issue many times so we will not waste our time there let's discuss Arun Kumar's article Arun Kumar a well-known economist and uh, a critique of the government also in economic issues uh, he has voiced against uh, all the mismanaged issues he even said that the growth rate may be in negative terms because the methodologies all change unorganized sector is not covered there and many many issues remain now he talks about the revenue issue the center and the states they both are short of resources and so short that the fiscal deficit is burgeoning now that's rising where the government was just something that uh, we have uh, controlled the fiscal deficit there and it is uh, uh, under 3.3 percent and uh, we will keep bring it to 3 percent there 3.1 percent there so that goal is going on but that's not the actual situation this is the allegation by many of the economic experts they say that it is way more than 3.3 percent because uh, the methodology is wrong there some things are excluded now leave leave that aside here he talks about the official numbers he says that now the deficit is rising SHM is op uh, still optimistic about that but RBI governor says uh, I am less positive here and he admits that the country's economic problems are also structural we were discussing that uh, whether these are cyclical or structural so government was saying it is only cyclical we will take measures but now they are forced to accept that these are structural also and the structural problems means they will take enormous amount of time to stabilize and uh, they may take more than four five quarters if these problems are structural now he explains how the fact is different here you see impact on tax revenues the private sector in its response to the slowdown there okay in the reaction to the slowdown has lost confidence and investing lesser already they were not investing the virtual stagnation was there in the private sector investment rates now they have lost confidence due to the slowdown also so that's the reaction and this is only gonna aggravate the economic crisis out there RBI report suggests that business confidence consumer confidence and capacity utilization three important factors they are running negative they are very low so there is no escaping the fact that the government has to garner resources and give a boost to the economy by increasing its investment now how to boost the revenues there go for more taxes go for more collection go for more cesses or go for more disinvestment now if you see their estimates they are running short of their estimates every year last year 1.5 lakh crore rupees were short in the tax revenue there they uh, had the assumption of 12 percent nominal growth there but uh, it was only nine percent nominal growth we are talking about it is not inflation adjusted so three percent difference it's a huge difference and this year also it is around nine percent 
the GDP numbers are 4.5 percent for the last quarter, but uh, uh, aggregate 9 percent is the nominal amount there. Nominal amount is always higher. I mean, not not always higher, but uh, uh, when the inflation is there in the economy, then it is always higher. So they are short of 1.5 lakh crore rupees last year, and this year also they will be short of the huge amount. This year, the writer says we will be short of uh, around 2 lakh crore rupees. why because this year is far worse and uh, the base for calculating the tax revenue this year was wrong and the rate of growth is incorrect now you see when they will be short of uh, 2 lakh crore rupees then according to the rule of 42% to the states means the states they are given 42% of the tax revenue there net tax revenue there so they will be uh, also short of 84000 crore rupees if the center is going to uh, if the whole country is going to be short of 2 lakh crore rupees then 84000 crore rupees will be lesser in the states share there additionally the corporate taxation cuts where the government is going to have lesser revenue by 1.445 lakh crore rupees so that is also a huge amount and if you take the 42000 42% of it then it is 58000 crore less revenue for the states so 84000 for the assessment and uh, 58000 for the corporate taxation cuts there so they are left with no other option than the disinvestment issue this is something the economists are talking about consistently now the disappointing issue is that this proceeds of this investment they are not shared with the with the states they will stay with the center only it's a bigger problem and this way apparently there is a larger shortfall in the resources for the states if the comparison is there between the center and the states so then the states are at bigger loss now the gst meeting was there on 18th december and uh, they were discussing the increase in the gst rates because they are bound to do so tax revenues are not there according to the expectation and now the deficit is rising so they are bound to do that but uh, uh, mercifully that didn't didn't occur now states have been complaining about uh, the resource gap there they said that uh, we are not uh, uh, compensated properly so the center has partly responded to this by transferring more but the deficit is very huge and when the center is partially partially uh, uh, compensating them and that is in the addition of the earlier estimate then the deficit is the main problem here because additionally they are giving something then uh, uh, this is raising the deficit there and that was the main issue for the government two things the inflation and the fiscal deficit only two things they talked in the, talked about in the uh, budget session there now both are at problem because the inflation is rising and the deficit is also rising now according to the rule center is required to give the states what their share of igst okay center gst and the state gst and third one is the igst so if the revenue growth of state gst is less than 14% then the center has to compensate these states how it is going to do that the cess collected on the sin goods what are the sin goods the alcohol uh, tobacco these are the sin goods means they should not be there but the tax is collected and uh, the cess is also collected from these goods and it is important for the revenue of the government there so they do not ban them now the cess collected on these sin goods the the center is going to compensate from this amount next issue of the auto sector the auto sector going through one of the worst phase and it's the biggest contributor you may say one of the biggest contributor to the gst and due to the slowdown in auto sector the gst collection is very less and the sales falling over the last 10 months collections have declined so the center is apparently holding back the states share of igst and arguing that the cess collection is inadequate to compensate and states for their shortfall and they have even said that by february these 
amounts for compensation they will and so states are crying more and more and uh, their cries are all legitimate because the management is happening from the center and uh, this is all a mismanaged issue it looks like that these are the allegations there now one big dilemma what is the dilemma the slowdown is going on the demand is not there and the demand is not there people are not having jobs people not people are not having incomes in their pockets so they are not moving to markets there so very poor condition is there for maximum number of people in this time if the inflation rises then it is the issue of stagflation many experts even arun kumar said that uh, we are certainly starting with the stagflation issue but officially it is not being accepted and the situation will be worse than uh, 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 here uh, if we do not pay attention to this and if we do not accept that now you see we have seen the revenues are falling what the government can do they will certainly raise the tax and uh, they will certainly raise the uh, rate the uh, raise the gst rates there if the gst rates are increased for sure the prices will rise means the inflation will rise and in the economic slowdown the jobs are not there people are not are not having money at this time if the inflation is going to rise then surely india's economy will be in a bigger crisis there they had the suggestions suggestions that uh, raise the slabs of 5% to 6% or 10% but uh, uh, the discussions are going on because all the inflationary moves will be there if they do so and the demand demand would further fall because if the prices are low then the people are not buying because they do not have any capacity so if the prices are going to go higher then uh, certainly the demand would, would fall there now the problem is compounded by the shortfall in direct tax collection because very less people they pay the income tax there and the corporate tax is having the cuts now 1.1.4545 lakh crore rupees will be lesser in the collection so it is going to hit the economy for sure but how much positive impact is there the the corporate uh, sector has hailed this move because obviously they are at advantage there but is it going to raise the demand issue no no positive impact on the demand and that's why the problem is compounded income tax rates cannot be raised by now because uh, uh, they are totally inequitable now what is going to happen if they raise the tax rates there rich corporates will pay a lower tax than the middle class who pay income tax there and that's happening for sure now the effect of it reduction if the income tax is reduced then you see there is certainly a pressure that re- reduce the income tax slabs there especially for the middle class because the demand is not there in the economy and if the demand is not there then certainly the economy is doomed and it will be doomed further people should go to the markets that is the ultimate need there for the demand but why they would go they have lesser disposable income disposable income means the income left after the income tax payments so the disposable income should rise and for that the income tax rates they should be reduced but that's not possible because the uh, the state is uh, uh, running short of the collections there so the cut in corporate tax rates will not boost demand since neither investment nor consumption will rise investment will rise only when the capacity utilization improves that's the need of the r and we have to take care about the capital output ratio also these two things okay so much store is being laid at the doors of multinational corporations relocating their factories from china to india this is this is happening and due to some uh, tariff wars and all and other issues and the attraction of indian economy many uh, businesses are shifting from china to india many man- manufacturing businesses but there are also problems now because the slowdown issue is really really bad and uh, that may boost the economy so we have to assess that in a way because that is going to uh, uh, give boost to the economy there next the unorganized sector that is a uh, missed it's missed uh, in a big way because if this sector is separately accounted for then the economy is in a, is in a sure recession economy is in a official recession if that is uh, uh, separately accounted there 
and it is not just a slowdown as official data based on organized sector indicates you see whatever whatever numbers we are having for the uh, GDP numbers and all these things. These all data are coming from the corporate bodies. These are coming from the companies. These are coming from the organized sector mainly. But the bigger sector is the unorganized sector, and that is not counted here. If we count that, that economy is in recession. So the deficit is. If the fiscal deficit is allowed to rise further, extra resources can be used to boost incomes in the unorganized sector. Through greater public investment, so the public investment is necessary, especially in the unorganized sector. So the people will have incomes in their hands, and they will go to the market, and the demand uh, will boost the supply and the production there. And further, economy will get a push. Otherwise, otherwise this issue is uh, uh, totally stuck. Further, poverty will rise. Government will have to bring some welfare schemes there, anti-poverty schemes there, because the poverty is rising, and the uh, depress, uh, depressing uh, scenario is uh, uh, is really. putting our economy in a very bad trajectory and if we continue uh, to go into this direction then government will have to do something for the poverty issue also for the inflation issue also and for the people's purchasing power also so they have to take readily available measures and the uh, professional decisions need to be made here okay so that's